So here comes the last part of this series on the myth of decline. And I'm going to cover a couple of things here. I'm going to start off with disease risk. Yeah, it's a myth. It's not aging. Yes, it may be common to see these things as people age, but is it normal? Remember in the very first video, I talked about you want to be uncommonly normal. So this hopefully will help to explain that in a little more detail. Um, you know, your diet, your lifestyle, your mindset. Yeah, your mindset ma makes a huge difference. I just read an article that talked about mindset can increase your risk of cardiovascular disease mindset. So it's not just what we're eating, right? So it is a myth that a shoebox of meds is what happens as you get older. This was my dad. He was in his 80s here, early 80s. And we got him off all, he was on like 14 meds. I won't go into all the detail. We got him off all his meds. He lived another 10 years of high quality life, went out every day to lunch with his lady friend. His life was good for 10 more years. Now, before we got him off the meds, he was homebound. He could barely, um, he couldn't even do stairs. He couldn't leave his house. And then he ended up, oh my goodness, his whole life just transformed. Now I'm not telling you to stop taking your meds. Okay, don't hear what I'm not saying. We worked with his doctor. We got him off everything safely, monitored him well, but it's, it's, it's a myth that you have to have these things. A lot of the times what you're, it's not even really necessary and it's all diet related or movement related, right? So I did a, a talk a while back. It was a couple of years ago, like a year and a half ago, something like that. And I did a deep dive into aging studies. And I looked at cellular senescence, genomic instability, telomere attrition, epigenetic dysregulation, loss of proteostasis, DNA damage. That might sound familiar to you, right? Mitochondrial dysfunction, uprated upregulated inflammatory response, altered intercellular communication and stem cell exhaustion. It's exhausting just saying these things. But to me, and this is common sense, and this is from working in this field for 30 years and working with mostly an older population. I've worked with younger people. I've worked with a lot of teenage athletes and that kind of thing. But I'm kind of drawn toward the older population because I want people to age really well. That's my goal. And I want to help people to do that as well. So this is what I think about this hold on, let me overthink this. I mean, really? Is all of this detail of this data going to make a difference if people aren't getting off their backside and if people are eating a bunch of junk? No. So which came first? I love this joke when I saw it, right? I bought a chicken from one, set, one website and an egg from another. I'll let you know. So which came first? Is it aging that caused all of the disease processes and all of the joint pain and the incontinence and the muscle loss? Or is it diet and lifestyle and mindset that caused the common effects, the commonly seen effects of aging, right? So again, it might be common, but it's not normal. Because the human body is not designed, if you feed properly, you train properly, and you have a healthy mindset, those things are a lot less likely to happen. You're going to radically reduce your risk of those things happening, almost eliminate them, right? And we can't eliminate the risk of everything, but we can sure reduce the risk. So these are the areas of focus. N you know, nourish the body. There's no neutral foods. They're either the positive, helping you to age well, or they're negative. They're your enemy. They're not going to help you to age well. If your goal is not to end up in a nursing home, watch what you're putting in your mouth. Train your body authentically, human motion. Make sure the front of the body works so you can bend backward. You can stand up straight. You can do the things you need to do without the risk of falling, right? Have that strength. You know, Be able to sit without plopping. Make sure you can do those things. And then your mindset, whatever you believe, you're right. If you believe you're supposed to start falling apart at the age of 40, I've heard, oh my goodness, my, my husband works a very physical job. He's 60, what is he now? 66 years old. And um, he'll be 67 in, in another month or two. And, and he does a very physical job. And he works with these young people. They're in their 40s and they're going, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this job when I'm in my 50s. And he's like, do you know how old I am? Right? It's, it's yeah, it's mindset. 
Whatever you believe, you're right. So train authentically. This is how we age well. Nourish your body properly. Have some faith, right? Believe that your body's designed to age well. Don't fall into that trap just because it's common doesn't mean it's normal. And then I love this. I came across this term, mediocrities. Eh, that's good enough. How many people are doing just a little something? Well, that's good enough. I had a salad yesterday, you know? Or yeah, I, you know, I, I spent five minutes on the stepper today. That's good. No, I'm not saying you got to spend five hours a day in the gym. I'm not saying you got to live on grass, but you know you have to do more than mediocre changes because it's not good enough. It's not gonna radically reduce your risk of ending up in a nursing home. I want everybody, no matter how old you are, when I'm a hundred and something, I want people to underestimate me. That'll be fun, right? Let people underestimate you. That'll be fun. All right, I'll see you all next week. <laughs>